Now, my dear lovely friends, respected ladies and gentlemen, I'm truly delighted to welcome Dr. Mustafa Sasa, who's a prominent Indian business magnate, social philanthropist, a renowned corporate speaker, mentor, mindset, and leadership coach, certified by world's number one leadership coach, Marshall Goldsmith. Dr. Mustafa helps leaders and CEOs increase their results by working smarter in today's economy scenario. Dr. Sasa is continuing his business legacy since 1958. He's a serial entrepreneur having diverse business experience internationally and very known for his CSR work in education. Well, my dear lovely friends, the chairman and managing director of Raj Group of Companies of Dubai, UAE. He's a chairman and managing director of Salesforce International LLC in Dubai and Sharjah Enterprise Private Limited in India. It's Sarah Raj, Enterprise Private Limited in India, qualified Masters in Emotional Intelligence and Criminology from the UK and PhD in Leadership from the University of Colombo in 2014. In 2017, my dear lovely friends, he's been conferred with the Honorary Doctorate in Social Science by the Medicina University in Colombo. Dr. Mustafa is General Secretary in Dubai Chamber of Commerce for BMTG and the UAE Chapter of Gujarat Chamber of Commerce and Industries. He's been awarded Mahatma Gandhi Pravasi Samman in House of Lords, London, by the British government and conferred with the Bharat Samman Award in New Delhi as well. And India's most influential leader of 2017. May we please welcome Dr. Mustafa Sasa. Aslam alaikum, Dr. Mustafa. And I must say, shukran to you for your humble presence. Truly an honor for all of us here. On behalf of the India Business Group Chamber of Commerce, we welcome you from all our heart and soul. Thank you. Thank you, Simanji. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vikas, you know, for giving us this platform. And uh, a wonderful audience today from Bombay and internationally. So uh, I take the liberty to start the presentation now. Okay, to this, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from whichever part of the world you are joining. Today's topic of impact of a good situational leader in an organization is a very important topic for an organization to excel. We will see the dim different dimensions on the leadership on different levels, which will help organization to, to go on the next level. This is one of the most proven model, and this is one of the uh, proven methodology to excel. While you know there are many different ways and many different methods to do this according to the task and the job of, of, the, of the company. What do you think a situational leader is? See, you know, in an organization, there are different layers of, of HR. Like for a, in a construction industry, if you see, the supervisor is a leader of the laborers. Then comes the manager, then comes general manager, then comes a the director, then managing director, then comes the chairman. Now, in, and many more in, in, in this, uh, within this uh, hierarchy as well. Now, if all these leaders on the different levels, if they are, if, if there is, they, are, they are very motivated and are good leaders on this different level, what's going to be the impact on the organization? Because, you know, this is a, this is a chain. So, if uh, the, it is called, the, the strength of the chain is measured by the weakest link in the chain. So if any point of time, if any point in the hierarchy, if the leadership is weak, that will, uh, that, that will be the both ends in the leadership. Uh, why, why it is important, the leadership, uh, situational leadership is important. The statistic says that only 18% of the global leaders today achieve both their short-term performance objective and effectively building foundation for the long-term. Because for a leader, it is very necessary, it is important to achieve the immediate requirement of the job and also as a leader and a, as a visionary to build foundation for the long term growth of the company. So only 18% are achieving this. That, that means that a huge gap of 78% is, 
you know, which are struggling because of the lack of uh, certain qualities within them. Uh, when I was studying leadership, I came across, I, I, I studied all many top leaders of the world, almost all the top leaders of the world. And some of the stories which has touched my heart, and one of the story I will narrate, you know, is the story of NASA. Every company has a vision and mission statement, fantastically written, and um, it takes many a time, you know, a, a lot of time to, to boil down on a vision and mission statement. Then it's written in the copper plate, hanged on a wall, but it's gathering dust. This vision and mission statement, many a times you have seen that it not it doesn't come in life. So the it's very important that you know you should be aligned with the mission, vision, and mission mission of the company. The story of the NASA is uh, is a very uh, fantastic example. You know how the alignment of the vision and mission. Uh, disseminates to the last person in the organization without diminishing its values. Uh, as, uh, as Russia was the first country to send men in space, it became a credibility issue for the United States. So they came out with a, uh, with a mission on moon in early 60s. And one of the, one of the JFK's uh, dream project, just before one of his visit, uh, periodic visit to NASA, he, he saw a person cleaning the floor. JFK directly asked him, what are you doing here? And that person's answer can be written in golden words in stone. He could have said that I'm mopping the floor, I'm cleaning the floor, or I'm sweeping the floor. But his answer was, I'm helping sending men on moon. Every person's objective and every person's task on that mission was aligned with sending the astronauts on the moon. Such kind of alignment of the job it's, uh, is, is nowhere seen in, 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 in other tasks. So this is one of the very, very touchy story which I'm sharing. And the alignment of the vision and mission has to be very, very precise. Otherwise, what happens, the strategies are made on the top. And by the time it goes down in the, in the, in the hierarchy of HR, it diminishes its value. It becomes like a Chinese whisper. So what, what started on the top is the, and the message goes down in the bottom is completely different and it doesn't connect at all with the mission and vision. So it is very important to have alignment of vision and mission. Some of the companies in Europe I know, every morning, every employee when they come to the office, they have to handwrite you know, the vision and mission statement every day. It's like the peanuts of the company. You know, you need to embed this in your culture. So once you do it repeatedly again and again, so you know, it, it comes in your culture. The alignment of the vision and, vision and mission is very important. Uh, I will I tell you about a very small story. Probably, you know, one part of the story we all have uh, learned and studied in, uh, in, in the primary school. Many a time we learn fantastic uh, values from the, from the basics and uh, uh, I, I will, this, this is a story of the, of the rabbit and the turtle. That's it, Once upon a time, a turtle and a rabbit were arguing about who was faster. They decided to settle the argument with a race. The turtle and the rabbit both agreed on a route and started off the race. Rabbit shot ahead and ran briskly for some time. Then, seeing he was far ahead of the turtle, he thought he'd sit under a tree for some time and relax before continuing the race. He sat under the tree and soon fell asleep. The turtle, plodding on, overtook him and soon finished the race, emerging as the undisputed champ. The rabbit woke up and realized that he'd lost the race. This, this part of the story, we all have been grown up with, like slow and steady wins the race. It's, it's, it's a saying always, you know, we, we, we repeat on, on many occasions. I will throw a, a, a further dimension on this story where, you know, we can see how the, the things changes further and you will see in the, in the next part of the story. Pointed at 
losing the race, and he did some thinking. He realized that he'd lost the race only because he had been overconfident, careless, and lax. If he had not taken things for granted, there's no way the turtle could have beaten him. So, he challenged the turtle to another race. The turtle agreed. This time, the rabbit went all out and ran without stopping from start to finish. He won by several miles. In this part of the story, you know, we learn that you know, fast and consistent is always better than slow and steady. It's good to be slow and steady, but it's better to be fast and consistent, uh, reliable. We live in a, in, a, in a digital world right now. Earlier, 20, 30 years back, 40 years back, you know, the product life cycle was very long. One product introduced in the market was used to last for five, seven, ten years. We have we have seen in our automobile that Ambassador and Premier Padmini they never changed their model until they vanished from the market. You know, so that, that thing was the life cycle was very long. Now the life cycle of the product has shrink to 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 months or even sometimes days. So the versions and, and things come so fast in the mobile industry. You know, it's about the smartphone comes every three, four months, a new model. So fast and consistent is always better than slow and steady. So now, you know, the story still doesn't stop here. I will, throw, I will show you another dimension of this story, which is, you know, more interesting. The turtle did some thinking this time and realized that there's no way he can beat the rabbit in a race the way it was currently formatted. He thought for a while, and then challenge the rabbit to another race, but on a slightly different route. The rabbit agreed. The turtle and rabbit started off. With his self-made commitment to be consistently fast, the rabbit took off and ran at top speed until he came to a broad river. The finishing line was a couple of kilometers on the other side of the river. The rabbit sat there, wondering what to do. In the meantime, the turtle trundled along, got into the river, swam to the opposite bank, continued walking, and finished the race. In this dimension of the story, you know, you need to use the playing field in accordance to your competitive uh, And in this, you know, once, uh, you bring forward the best teammates who possess this this competency in a in a in a team. See, many a time it happens that you know uh, a person has has done a phenomenal job in in uh, in one dimension, but whenever some deviation comes as a leader, you know he he stops. I'll give you two examples on, on this. You know on on uh, the, the choosing the right playing field and or getting the right competence. You know for that playing field. Abraham Lincoln, he was asked once that if we give you one hour to cut the tree, what you will do? He said that 55 minutes I will spend sharpening my axe and five minutes I will cut the tree. A similar example, a similar question was asked to Albert Einstein that if we give you one hour to solve the problems of the world, what you will do? He said 55 minutes I will analyze this, the, the, the problems and five minutes I'll try to solve it. In this, the message is that you know you, you need to to have a proper analysis of your of your playing field and proper uh, situational analysis and and option analysis and bring forward the right person from the team to uh, for the job. If not that, you should induct one in the team and make him do this. The the story even doesn't end here. I will show you further dimension of the story, which will it's, it's more interesting and which will help uh, the leaders to get the right message. They've become pretty good friends and they did some thinking together. Both realized that the last race could have been run much better. So the turtle and rabbit decided to do the last race again, but to run as a team this time. They started off and this time the rabbit carried the turtle till the riverbank. There, the turtle took over and swam across with the rabbit on his back. On the opposite bank, the rabbit again carried the turtle, and they reached the finishing line together. 
Both the turtle and rabbit felt a greater sense of satisfaction than they felt earlier. The last part of the uh, of the story was very interesting and, and, and it gives a fantastic message. Rather than being an individual, you need to succeed as a teammates. And, and, uh, and complementing each other competencies, you know, will make you, uh, will, will enhance your productivity. So in, as a leader, always, you know, the, there is a revolving importance in the team. Whoever possesses the, the, that skill set, you know, will, be, will uh, come forward and lead the team. So this revolving importance and revolving chair in the leader is, is very important. Many a time we have seen that there is, in a team, that, uh, there is no, nobody is called or named as a leader. He is called as a coordinator. As a coordinator, he, he coordinates his teammates with an equal set of talents. And wherever the talents, uh, each one's competency and the talent is required, he will chair uh, that, that session. So this is a very important message, you know, from a very frugal, from a story, what we learned from the kindergarten and enhance on a, on a message of leadership in this. See, one of the core competency required for a good leader is to form a competent team. As we see, it's very evitable uh, in, in, uh, in the uh, medical uh, industry. Nowadays, hospitals are not run by doctors. They are run by businessmen or, you know, um, or certain NGOs or non-profit organizations like foundations and all. So they, they, does not, they does not have competency to run a, a, a hospital, but they have competency to form a competent team of doctors and the management, which makes that hospital one of the best treatment center. There, there are a lot of uh, uh, definitions written about leadership and, and uh, team building, but one of the, one of the best which I like is that, you know, in, in a good team, uh, we get extraordinary results from ordinary people. We all are ordinary people, but in a good team, we perform extraordinarily. So this is uh, a good team will, will uh, help to unleash the potential and, uh, and, uh, and the talent of an ordinary person, converting the task into a, a extraordinary results. See, one, if it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic saying that if you don't prepare, you will spend your time in repair. Preparation is very important. As we said, you know, in the example of Abraham Lincoln and also Einstein, you need to have a thorough analysis of the situation as a leader and at different level of different leaders, they have a different set of requirements. So they should have a thorough knowledge of that so they should have a forecast of the uh, situations going to encounter in this and should be ready with the, with the solutions for that. Uh, many leaders often fail to achieve desired performance mainly due to lack of communication. We have, and we have seen when I, whenever I counsel you know, on, the, on the leaders in the organization and when we deep dive into the organization, <clears throat> we mainly find that 90 percent of the problems are happening due to lack of communication. This lack of communication is a, such a barrier that is, everything is going on assumption. And as it is said, the assumption is mother of disaster. So there should be a proper flow of communication. I'll give one very good example in this that, you know, most of the companies are, are, are encountering this, uh, this situation day in, day out. There were four people in the team, everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. These are the four people working in the same team, and there was a task. Now, everybody thought that somebody will do it, whereas this, ta this task could have been done by anybody, but nobody did it. So in this situation, everybody blames somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done it. In this, um, it is a very classic uh, example of this, that in an organization, many of the simple tasks are also left out on that, okay, you know, anybody will do it, but nobody does it, you know, at the end, where uh, everybody thought that somebody will do it. So this, this kind of 
communication gap we always encounter in the company. Now, in, a, in our company, we have a, a very defined set of communication. We follow three rules in communication. One is empowerment, second is suggestion, third is instruction. When any task is given to anyone, uh, when any, it is labeled as empowerment, then that person has a full empowerment in executing that job. The person entrusting the task is only uh, waiting for the results or, or to come. He does not peep into the, the methodology or how it's going to ex execute. So the, the person who is entrusted the task is has full empowerment on the execution. Now, this, uh, the second is suggestion. A person entrusting the task to, uh, to somebody, he will give certain suggestions, like, you know, from point A to, to reach to point B, if there are five different routes, he will say that, you know, point B, there is an accident. If uh, you're planning to go there, you may avoid it. But this is a suggestion. Still, the decision is on the part of the person who, who has been entrusted with the job. If he feels that, no, there is a work on the way in route B, which I have to do it, then he may choose that route B. But uh, if, if the, he feels that, no, no, it's a good you suggested, I will avoid route B and take a route A, B, C, uh, A, C, D, E, anyone. So he can do that. In this suggestion, the, uh, it, it improves the quality making, uh, the decision making quality of a person. His decision making ability improves with this, with this suggestion. But still the, the, the final decision lies with the person who has been entrusted this job to accept the suggestion or reject. So this is a second uh, law of communication. The third and most important is, uh, is uh, uh, this empowerment suggestion and the third one is instruction. In, when there is an instruction label, when there is any task labeled with instruction, that instruction has to be followed with every dot and comma. You cannot deviate from that. If let's say from point A to point B, if a person has to go for the task, and if it is an instruction and written the longest route, he has to follow that longest route. He can't use his own intelligence and say, no, no, I, I know a shorter way to do it when it is labeled as instruction. In this, uh, in this uh, instruction uh, method of communication, there is, there is a window where a person who has been entrusted with the job can go to the person who has instructed him only. He cannot bypass and go to his superior or a senior and tell him that, see, you know, your manager has given me this going to the director that, you know, this task and I think it is wrong. I can use a better way to go. Immediately the, the director will ask him, what is the uh, level of uh, communication in this? If that person says instruction, then the director will say, please go to the manager and, and talk to him. So there is only one window. He can go only to the person who has instructed this job or else he has to follow it every dot and comma in this. So there are reasons behind it because there are many, many tasks which a, which a leader of that level enters to his subordinate through his thorough experience and knowledge and the, the junior who is executing the job or his subordinate who is executing the job, he, is, he, does not, uh, he, he does not have any idea on that experience or certain things which the, the, the person who has entrusted job has encountered or has it visualized. So this, this three phase of communication we follow and we have a, a very uh, a fantastic you know, harmony in the company as far as communication is followed. Uh, is, is matter. We'll go next. See, there are uh, different levels of uh, of leaders. Now, um, it's the leadership is uh, needs a, a skill and will. These are the two things you know uh, required for the for a leader. In this, you know, matrix, we will understand four different levels of of uh, leaders. If you go in level one, a, a person lacks the skill for the task and can't and won't take the responsibility of the for the task. Like, you know, that person is ignorant to the, to the execution required for this task. So this level of, uh, of uh, this uh, a person is that when somebody enters a task without uh, understanding his capability, 
then he is surely going to encounter surprises and accidents. Like, you know, if a person does not know how to ride a bike and I give him a key to go for a bike and tell him to do the job, he may damage himself and, and, and may, you know, hurt some other people also. So here, understanding the skill and entrusting the task is very important. The next level is a person is willing to, uh, willing to do that task. However, the skill he does not possess. He is very enthusiastic. He is very enthusiastic person. Let's say, you know, if a person has ridden a bike for 100,000 kilometer, that does not qualify him to ride, to, uh, to, uh, to drive a car. He has a will to go, go further, but he does not have a skill to ride, to drive the car. The, the expertise required for riding a bike is completely different than driving a car. So both are mode of transport, but he cannot say that, you know, because I have, I have done this so much of uh, riding, now you give me car. He has to learn the skills of driving the car and then he, he can be entrusted with the car. The fourth level, uh, when, at the third level, when we go, a person is skilled, but his lack of confidence of uh, doing that job. Uh, he is fantastically skillful uh, uh, and he understands the uh, entire nitty-gitties of that task, but he does not have the will to take the challenge. This, you know, kind of example normally we see with the, with the professors, with the very respected professors in the college. You know, they, they are the people uh, who groom our children to become a better uh, person in their professional and, and, a, and a business life. But their professors, they possess all the skills, but they don't have the will to take a risk to go into that business or you go into executing that task. So this is one example you know, where, where a person has all the set, skill sets required, but his will, willingness or risk-taking ability is so low that he cannot be interested with that, with that task. And the fourth level and, uh, is that the person has a skill also, and he has a will to execute the job. This is the best person whom the person can be entrusted with the task. It's in, the, in, the, in, the, in the organization, the, the tasks are being divided and, 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 and distributed as per the skills and the will of the person. It's not that if a person is talking good, will be entrusted a task. He should have that skill sets and he should have that confidence of taking the responsibility of the end results. So that person, if chosen as a, as a leader, will have a better performance on a situational leadership in the hierarchy. Now, you know, there are, there are four E's, uh, effective situational leadership uh, leaders, you know, I should possess. First and foremost of the E is education. Of course, you know, education is a game changer. I, many times I wonder on, on many people that, you know, what took them to that position? When we see of our former president of India, Professor Dr. Abul Kalam, he, he sat on the highest chair uh, uh, in our India as a president of India. That one thing what took him there was his education. He came from a very, very modest uh, background as a uh, fishing village in South India. But what took him to the highest chair of, uh, um, make him sit on the highest chair was his education. The education is a game changer in a leader. If a person possesses education, that will have an edge on the others because the structured education will help him to excel and uh, go further in the life. The second E required is experience. We see many a times a fresher when he graduates, you know, the first thing what he seeks is experience. He is not aspiring for a, for a high value job or a very high position in the company. He is always aspiring that I should look for a good company where I can apply my education and get experience which will help me to um, um, boil this together and get me a better results and then he can go to a better position. So a person, a uh, leader should possess uh, a, a set of ex this experience and this experience along with the education will take him to a higher level. The third is exposure. Many a time we see that the person has a fantastic education, has a very good experience, 
but he is not given opportunity for that. So if opportunity is not given to you, let's say you know, I mean, I, I many a times I say that there are there are there are better players than Tendulkar in in India. There are better singers than you know some of the best singers in our our uh, in in the film industry, music industry, but they don't get exposure. Now with certain platforms coming up, you know, on the on the uh, TVs and all, so then they get such exposure. So this value of exposure is also also very much a person possessing education, you know, and, and experience. If he is not getting a right exposure or he is not given opportunity to to use his experience and education, that that will not help. So as a leader, a person always should see that you know a person has uh, experience. Uh, education, then that person should be given exposure. So then, the good results will come out. The fourth and uh, is empowerment. This is a very classic example we have seen in many organizations, where a leader has a fantastic team, a team which has a educated people in the team. They have good experience. They have good exposures in the previous company or previous assignments they have done. But the leader is not empowering them anything he limits the powers to himself thinking that nobody can do better than him of course you know you cannot find his clone in the world but this if he does not empower then you know the team will get fatigued or he will they will get demotivated and he will lose the good team in no time so a leader should uh, have all these four things education experience uh, exposure and empowerment the, the um, empowering his team to execute the job so that will unleash their talents and help them to apply their knowledge experience and exposure with this empowerment to get better results i will give one very good example of uh, our former president of india uh, professor dr abul kalam i'll give an instant this is all of you who are assembled here, all of you. Remember this incident. 1979. 1979. SL3 satellite launch vehicle. I was the project director, mission director. My mission is to put the satellite in the orbit. Thousands of people worked nearly 10 years. I reached the I reached the Sri quota. And it's in the launch pad, countdown was going on. T minus four minutes, T minus five minutes, T minus one, one minute, T minus 40 seconds. Computer put a hold, don't launch it. Computer says, don't launch it. I'm the mission director, I have to take decision. Everything is on. Behind me, there are six experts. They saw data, computer database coming in and screen, and they see the pictures in the screen, they said there's a problem. The problem is there's a leakage in the system, in the control system. But immediately the calculation, no problem. We have got sufficient fuel and oxidized for control. Control system is controlled the rocket to the required attitude. And uh, we can go ahead. Now, of course, my experts view, but I took a decision. Problem is mine. I, finally, I took a decision I bypassed the computer and I launched the system. Okay, I launched the system. Okay, Apollo went. First stage worked in the four stage rocket, and second stage got mad. It went to spin. Instead of putting the satellite in the orbit, it put in the bay of the car. 1979, it was a failure. It was a failure. First time I experienced my failure. How do you manage the failure? Success I can manage. So at that time, a great man, a great leader, also Satish Dhawan. He comes to me, I'm very tired working nearly for months. He makes me up, come, let him go for a press conference. Press was meeting there, like this number of people, world press, before all this and that, all the gadget they are there. I was highly frightened and I will be the culprit. <laughs> because I'm the project and mission director. What Satish Dhawan said, Chairman of Indian Space Research Organization said, Dear friends, we have failed today. This is the first time I have to do all the success, all the failure 
is uh, I want to support my technologists and scientists and staff so that next year they succeed. So he took the whole day himself. And uh, then media asked, you have put uh, Bay of Bengal so many crores. You have put like a lot of criticism. He received the criticism. He assured them in a year we will succeed with our team. It's a very good team. Next year, here only interesting thing happened. Next year, July 18, 1980, when he succeeded, Professor Dhawan said, you go and conduct the press conference. You follow what it means. It means when the failure occurred, the leader took it up. When the success came, he used his team. That's the first time. Fantastic moral we get from this clip of uh, Honorable uh, Professor Dr. Abul Kalam. That, you know, the, the leader should possess that quality to share the success with, the, with his team. And when there is a failure, he should take the responsibility upon it. Normally, it happens reverse. People, you know, are, are, are dying to take success of, of the teammates and put a feather in his cap. And when the failure comes, they always try to uh, blame game and, and find a shoulder to, to lay that, that failure upon him. So this is, you know, a fantastic model. In this, what we observed is there were three levels of leaders in this. One is Professor Dr. Abul Kalam as a mission director. One, Dr. Dhawan as a chairman of ISRO. And the third leaders were the set of experts who were, who were along with, uh, with, with uh, Dr. Abul Kalam. So there are three levels of leaders in this, what we see. And each of the experts had their own team working below them. So this situational leadership, who took the decision, the third, the third level as an expert, they suggest. And the decision was taken by the second level as a mission director. But who took the blame? The top person sitting as a chairman. So this is a fantastic case study of how the success has, is shared and the failure taken upon him. This is a, 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 one a characteristics a, a leader has to have in him to have a better performance from his teammates. Now there are, there are five levels of leadership. You know, it is very well described by John Maxwell. When I was studying my leadership, I, I looked upon his, his work and he's one of the fantastic leadership uh, coach. And uh, his five level of leadership you know, it's, it's uh, defined in that there is first is a position leader. People follow him because they have to. There are certain leaders we see in an organization or even in certain places where they, they are the followers are compelled to follow them, follow him. They, uh, they, this is a situation where, you know, we see in the very lower category where a person is livelihood is dependent on on that person and that he is because of his livelihood he is just following him the moment he gets an alternative to that he will leave from that because the in this kind of leadership it is it's very autocratic and a person um, does not behave like a leader he behaves like a raja or maharaja more and you know treats the the, the, the teammates in a very uh, inhuman way so this is a very the lowest <clears throat> form of leadership the next form uh, is the, the next level is a permission leadership. Here, people follow him, the leader, because they want to. That person has done something good, so you know they, they want to follow him. And in this kind of leadership, you know there is a relationship between the leader and the follower. So in this relationship and in this bond, so there is a will. So the person um, follows him because of uh, his bond with him. This bond can be relations. This bond can be, you know, like uncle and nephew. This bond can be like a father and son. So they, they, and this is a second level of leadership where they want to fo follow him. Now we go to the third level of leadership is a production le uh, leadership. This is people follow uh, him because that person has done something for the organization. When a junior or a new induction is done on a, uh, in, in the organization, there are certain names in the organization always you know, echoing that 
this person has done fantastic uh, work for the organization so they would like to work under him to get his is uh, is experience or get his you know and get the knowledge what he possesses and the experience what he does so these are the these are the these are the uh, leaders who have already shown results has already helped the followers to to gain something from that leader so a person are longing to follow him in in this organization so he has done something wonderful for the organization thus you know people are longing to follow him the fourth level of leadership is reproduction it's a people's development in this level of leadership the people follow them because a leader has done something for the team so is is not only as a leader he possesses a lot of emotions and uh, this uh, uh, is connected with him so he he sympathizes with uh, with the follower with his teammates and also empathize with them so in this uh, set of you know leadership a person or uh, the teammates follow him because the leader invests his time and efforts in developing the teammates so and grooming them it's it's like a coach and you know it's like a guru and a coach you know helping him to achieve to the next level because in this level of leadership a person thinks that my teammates are future leaders so you know grooming them will help to create a successor so this is one of the high level of leadership but yet it is not the topmost the topmost comes <coughs> sorry as a pinnacle well people follow them and respect them for what they represent here it comes you know it's a value based here it comes as as a as a persons uh, that aura is such that you know the people follow him like you know a classic example we can give for this is mahatma gandhi billions of people follow him not everybody had met him in in the in the course of his journey when they in the struggle of independence but everybody followed him looking at the work he has done and the values he represent and what 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 ambition he has and what his values are in in similar way we can say as nelson mandela or you know we can say as imam hussein like you know he, he gave up his life for the values all these examples are, are are the pinnacle leaders you know they live for the cause and the value of the mankind and humanity so these are the the leaders who influence the masses and uh, when i say masses it goes beyond boundaries so people have not met him also they are not his teammates they are not working in the organization but yet they follow him follow him for many reasons for his values and what he has done for the humanity so these are the five set of leadership what we saw now the the leaders uh, uh, who is called a leader if i am walking alone i am not called a leader i if somebody is following me then i am called a leader so a, 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 normally a leader creates followers but a great leader always creates leaders so he always looks upon his followers as a future leaders and inculcate sense of leadership the values of leadership the characteristics of leadership among the followers creating each one like him so you know that is that is a the greatest form of of the leadership the in in the entire in the section you know what we see is that the leadership requirement what is a fundamental requirement of the leadership is decision making ability the leaders they create strategies and the this decision making ability taking people uh, along with him in the journey of excellence making everyone happy not uh, for for the for the relation they have with them but looking at the task and looking at their future so that makes a, a leader as a great leader so you know the the difference between your yesterday and tomorrow depends on the decision you take today so the leaders whatever they take decision today that will be the game changer or a differentiator between your yesterday and tomorrow we have seen many many examples of the, the a company or a person who are who started as a very modest beginning or a very naive beginning but you know they are 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 known names in the society or in the world 
because of certain decisions they took on in, in the journey which made which made them what they are today thank you this is a, a, a very short and the synopsis a very condensed form of leadership what i gave you of course you know this has a enormous this leadership is a enormous topic and there are so many further dimensions and so many great things a person will learn but this was just a teaser and i hope that you know uh, everybody has something to take home from this presentation and uh, i i thank uh, 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 madam simranjay and mr vikas you know our, our dear friend so for giving me this opportunity to conduct this session in the best of my capacity that's really kind of you dr mustafa it's been absolutely overwhelming for all of us you know trying to rejuvenate ourselves and our energies at this point of time we have a couple of questions if uh, you may kindly allow us uh, i would like to know in a world of today where even the leaders are absolutely unaware of the situation you know of the outer world and the inner world uh, could you please highlight on how leaders could show everyone that they're not nervous and they are very confident about what the future will be yes you know see currently we live in a very volatile and hostile world yeah so you know in uh, we used to hear in india that panchvarshiya yojana five years planning commission so earlier we had a five years planning for our country you know in the company also they used to have an annual planning so they used to forecast because you know earlier they, we lived in a, in, a, the, in the companies the departments and the divisions performed in silos they were not interconnected even the countries were not interconnected they were all confined within the boundary of their own uh, of that country itself so we were living in in uh, 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 unshared certainties uh, so uh, unshared certainties are that i am only worried about my things and my my uh, job description or my leadership and my team i am only worried about that because it is a unshared certainties in my in my uh, field i am i i know what's going to happen which is you know i can i am ready to encounter and forecast forecast and encounter that now we live in the world which is connected to each other even the departments are connected to each other one thing goes wrong here will affect so many other other departments or so many one thing happened in china affected the entire world <clears throat> so it is now we live in 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 a uh, in shared uncertainties our our everything is shared and still it is uncertain so you know this is this is a saying of our dear friend mr usman sultan was ex uh, uh, ceo of do this shared uncertainties and uh, cert, uh, uncertain share, share things so we are very much connected in this time what one has to do is to narrow the time frame of the planning so from one year you know the company started planning quarterly so they try to compare this quarter with the previous year and forecast the next quarter now it came is take every day as it comes so in a very hostile and volatile situation a leader should have ability to condense the time frame of the planning yet the planning has to be dynamic like it is said you know that you cannot enter into a war without a plan but no plan works in war so you should have a plan but your plan should not be rigid that it cannot adjust uh, and it should be dynamic to the changes happening in and the changes are so fast and and uh, rapid that you should adhere to this so once a leader if he has that ability to to, to uh, have a dynamic plan and do changes and calibrate accordingly definitely you know there the uh, success will go high and the failure will go low Sure. Thank you so much. We have a question from Ganesham Ji. What leaders are being practiced today by the Chinese government in decision making for image building and the maintenance with India and the world? You almost touched upon China, so if you could kindly highlight us on this. Of course, you know this is a political question, but you know I will give you from the leadership perspective. Sure. Uh, see, if you say which form of leadership is good or bad, it's a cycle. you know one goes from a democratic to autocratic and again to democratic so you know people get after some time 
you know, they will say, okay, this model is, is not workable, let's adhere to the next model. When you go to the next model, you say that, okay, again, this is not workable. See, when, when, when uh, uh, the, the Russia, USSR, when it got fragmented to many different countries, at the same time, European Union formed the association of different countries. So, you know, the, there is nothing as, as, a, as a right model. But of course, you know, as a leader, certain characteristics should be common among him as, you know, uh, even a, a little bit of uh, modesty is, is good for a king or a leader. So, you know, he should possess the human qualities. It's not that, you know, what is, the autocratic system is good or a democratic is good. See, in an in, in a autocratic situation, we, uh, we see fantastic examples of a good autocratic uh, governance. <clears throat> like say, you know, we live in, in, in the Middle East where it is the monarchy still possess, uh, is over here. But we see fantastic results of such harmony and peace that we don't, we don't think of any other model in this. In uh, India, <clears throat> we have a democracy. But you know, 70, 80 people, percent of the people are, are, does not know the, the true meaning of democracy. Democracy does not mean that I'm allowed to do anything or you know, I, I have all the rights. These are the, the two sides of the coin, the rights and duties. So, you know, of course, uh, anything, uh, like, you know, it is said that anything in excess is poison. So, you know, is, uh, and, uh, it is another thing what is well said is, the power corrupts and the, the more power, it's more corruption. So the centralization of the power should not be too much in a way that, you know, it corrupts a person and then, you know, the, the, the entire uh, citizens of that country or, or that place will suffer. So this balance of democracy and autocracy has to be maintained, which is very well seen in, in this part of the world we live. And, uh, and you know, everybody possesses then all the freedom to do everything. And yet, you know, the control mechanisms are put in, in good place. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have a session. Should leaders should be a personal agenda or should it be for the team? The last one that we like to, you know, request you to answer, please. So, you know, uh, the, a person first needs to be a leader to make others as a leader. So personal agenda is always there for him to become a good leader and then, you know, um, make sure that the team also, you know, is groomed in a way that they are future leaders of, of that company or organization. But, you know, when, when this question is asked, is the leadership inborn skills or acquired? I say it's 50-50. If a person possess, has an inborn certain leadership skills, but then it is not honed and not sharpened to the, to the requirement, then he does not become a good leader. So many a time we have seen as a legacy, uh, uh, the, the king's son becomes, uh, the prince, crown prince becomes the king, uh, and, but he does not possess that good leadership. So that thing, you know, is, is certain things are acquired, that is an acquired leadership. But if he's not group, like we have seen in the Mughal emperor, few of them emperors were good. And we have seen that some of them were were so nasty that uh, the entire uh, that, that phase of that era has been written in the dark uh, dark patch. So this kind of things are you know certain acquired and certain uh, certain haunt skills. So first a person needs to to become a good leader. Then you know make sure that he creates successors and he creates good leaders. So that is that is uh, the hierarchy. That's absolutely wondrous. We are truly thankful to you, Dr. Mustafa Sasa, for the most amazing session that we had here today. I want to request Mr. Vikash Mitter Sain for his closing remarks as well. So therefore, this is one of the most extraordinary talks that I have had to listen, or I had an opportunity to listen to. I know this guy pretty well, but I didn't know he's all this. <laughs> the next time I see him is going to be from different eyes. Thank you very much. We can go ahead and close it. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. And yes. thank you, uh, Ms. Simran, for, for being my host. And uh, it was a wonderful session. Thank you all.
Thank you, Dr. Mustafa Sasa. If you may permit us, if you can just have the videos on for a group photo op, only by your permission. Is yes, that all right? Thank you so much. So I'm going to request um, my lovely team, my lovely crew is here with us. My humble thanks to Girish and Siddhi for all the inputs. And uh, Girish, if we could please have the videos on. And uh, everybody, please kindly join us for a group photo op. Uh, for all those who are new and who joined us for the first time today, I'm going to request you to kindly send your details in the chat box, your email ID, so that we could connect with you and uh, let you know about the future webinars as well. So meanwhile, uh, while we have all the videos on, uh, I'm going to take this opportunity of thanking the beautiful family of IBG. No matter how the situation, all we need to do is just think think, have your vision. And of course, this is the time for really thinking very, very unique and you never know what idea might click. I'm going to take this opportunity of thanking India Business Group Chamber of Commerce for these very amazing webinars, which take you into a different world altogether of positivity and optimism. So our humble thanks to each and every one of you. My name is Simran Ahuja, and it's time for us to have the countdown of three for the right photo op. So let's smile, three, two, and a click. The last one, three, two, one. Look forward to meeting you for the next webinar. Till then, my humble thanks to Mr. Vikash Mithasain, Ms. Priya, Girish, Siddhi, and our very special guest with the extraordinary talk, Dr. Mustafa Sasa Shukran.